last question Arna, is that one of the things that we all collectively failed with the last government was to get the prevention of communal and targeted violence bill passed even tabled in parliament uh, it proved to be far more difficult but like you said uh, some things have taken 30 years and 40 years so maybe its time will also come will the cost by then be too high because we are seeing heightened communal tensions a divisive a divisive language not just western up last year but we've seen it in trilokpuri delhi we have elections coming and it seems as if communal violence is also being kept on a slow burner by the party in power to use as and when it chooses. I think your analysis is more or less right but you know it, it wouldn't do us any harm to get the bill again and genuinely see what provoked the kind of reaction which made it impossible to be passed in parliament and to some extent we can go back to the drawing board not in every way possible but I think we can go back to the drawing board because that didn't it was not a minority bill no it was a communal violence bill it should be seen as no majority being able to take into its hands the power to use violence and all the very variations of violence on a community that's a minority community at the village district at level. the village and <coughs> district level so at the village level it, it changes so it, it is that's not necessarily one minority me. the interpretation that was given to it so i think you would do very well to have really in the in this series many people come and explain what it is because in india we jump to conclusions without even opening a thing. We want the constitution change, we've never seen the constitution. We believe that, you know, I mean, absurd things about women, absurd things about minorities, absurd things about communities and caste, without even understanding what goes on. And in this recent interview, in the World Economic Forum interview, the minister would have me believe that Dalits and, and caste uh, untouchability issues don't exist in this country. Which kind of world are we living in? He said, don't talk about it because you're being divisive and you use categories. Like yes, that. exactly. The categories exist, exist because there's divisiveness. It's just the reverse. So I think our younger people, especially in this country, and maybe all the NRIs living abroad, need to understand that as a Dalit today, you cannot touch a glass. You cannot touch an earthen pot. You can be beaten, you can be hung, you can be strung, you can be killed for it today. Now, if that is the reality of the situation, and there's been a great spate of increase of Dalit violence, in at least in the area in I, where I live, in Bihar, in UP, in Maharashtra, we've seen it everywhere. How can you wish it away? Similarly, with minorities who live with constant fear, constant apprehension, we have to address it. We don't address this and make them believe that this is a country which is theirs. They have as much right to speak with uh, with full freedom of expression, express their point of view, we can argue it out. But it doesn't necessarily mean fear. Any country that begins building a, a whole structure on the basis of fear is bound to fall. It cannot exist on the basis of fear and hatred and violence. So the government, if it's wise again, if it's intelligent, will address these as fundamental issues which need to be settled. Of course, one can't speak for the way people are and what they believe in. But I think I'm an Indian and as an Indian, I would like an India with everyone represented and also my difference getting some place. I'm not saying I'm always right, but I should get the right and the freedom to speak and speak everywhere. So in my case, for instance, it's my fundamental right is my right to free speech. If that goes, then I go. Because uh, there's a beautiful poem by a famous Tamil poet called Bharatiyar. And he was a, of course, North India doesn't know about him at all today. But he was a great poet. He fought for India's independence. And he was banned by the British. So he lived in Pondicherry and died there. There's a beautiful poem of his in, written in Tamil. The gist of it is, a poor woman says, of course, I'm hungry and I need my gruel. But more than that, I need the right to say that I am poor and I need my gruel because with that, without that, I will not get my gruel. So the right to freedom of expression is more, is absolutely the most fundamental right, even for the poor to say that they are hungry, that they need food. So I really think if in a country we are going to be terrorized to keep silent, if we are going to be every time you write an alternative point of view, 
your you get hate mail and you're getting uh, social media attacks the people who attack the young should understand that that is not democracy democracy is trying to say okay if this is so and that is so what would you say next not saying you are such and such you are such and such and i for no matter what as individually though i'm not i hardly am an individual i'm always a member of a collective but since i i, I believe so much in the right to freedom of speech I think I would really think it's a basic thing every campaign must fight for and it's now we are all understanding it that we begin with the right to freedom of expression and speech and the right to dissent, to disagree and to oppose however we like without violence in society is our fundamental basic right. So this pulping of books, this rewriting of curricula and taking over the various kinds of opinions is completely unacceptable. And the, the censorship that has begun of films, that's unacceptable. I think if one extreme opinion, if people can go around saying that Godse is a hero and Gandhiji is a villain, then if every single shade of opinion in this country must be allowed. Thank you so much, Arunaji. Thank you very, very much for this interview.